Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following everything happening with the latest gaming hardware. I'm Damon Hadfield. As always, I'm joined by Max Scoville, host of IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond. Hey. And Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Good to be back. Welcome back, Ryan. And this week we're discussing a tale of two console manufacturers, PlayStation and Xbox, where the, uh, the rumored next hardware from both of them seem to be very, very different for PlayStation. We expect them to have a PS5 Pro in the works. And for Xbox, it might very well be a handheld Xbox. So to sort of take a look at the different approaches the, the console manufacturers are taking, I wonder, what, I, just, I wonder how we ended up, how did we get here? What, and what are sort of the strategies behind these two very different angles that they're taking? Max, why don't we begin with the PS5 Pro? It's sounding more and more like this thing is real and uh, some apparent specs were released recently, but I'm still kind of seeing, I'm still not seeing a lot of excitement for it, a lot of people who are excited about buying a PlayStation 5 Pro yet. No, it's it's sort of a weird time. We did a poll last week asking people about, you know, what the biggest disappointment from this console generation is so far. And, you know, the the resounding success of you know, spoilers for the poll results is people feel like we haven't quite gotten current gen games yet. And, you know, you can't really blame them for feeling that way. As far as getting, you know, dedicated PS5 games, we haven't really seen that much that fully pushes this machine to its to its limits. So, like, the fact that Sony's, you know, carting out a, an up, upgraded model doesn't really seem fully justified yet as for what the what the machine can do what the what the console can do i don't i it's it's great you know it's the ps5 on its own is is fine and i don't uh i feel like the addition of a ps5 pro is honestly just kind of confusing matters and it's just going to add you know it's sort of the inverse problem of the the series s where you have like another skew to try to make a game line up for mm -hmm. uh, and then i mean if if you have developers trying to target the best possible performance on a PS5 Pro, does that make the base version run worse? Is that does, is that a risk that we're you know running into if they're scoping things for a more powerful machine, but that's not quite on par with everything else? It's again, it's just sort of a weird kind of a weird monkey wrench, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm 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 excited to be uh, for Sony to try to impress us with it. Like I'm mm -hmm. I'm we haven't we've we've seen specs, you know, like we haven't yet seen justification for this you know this Pro's existence, but like. You know, I want to be I want to be surprised. I want to be tempted to buy an expensive new console. But uh, yeah, it's again weird generation for this. Ryan, on the Xbox side, do you think it's that this apparent lack of a need for uh, a more powerful hardware this generation at this point could that be why Microsoft doesn't perhaps doesn't seem interested in a pro Xbox Series X? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they they see that the the potential sales when you go up market from five hundred dollars is i mean remember the the xbox one x which at least offered a real obvious immediately in your face benefit which was true 4k gaming which we didn't have on the native xbox one the regular xbox one and that was 499 dollars we're still at 499 dollars now for the series x and so going up from there Microsoft has a lot of smart people working for them, and, and they know what the market potential is for a probably 600, maybe even higher dollar pro machine or, or you know, whatever they would call it on the Microsoft side. So I, I think it's really wise for them to instead look at the success, that the relative success that they've had. They're still obviously well behind Sony and console sales this gen, but the relative success that they've had with the Series S and getting people into the Xbox ecosystem that way. And they're, they're looking at that going, okay, and the, we see the rise of, of handheld gaming in the form of, you know, obviously not just the Switch, but the Steam Deck and all these other Windows gaming uh, handheld PCs now. So I think it just makes perfect sense. And, and I think the ceiling is a lot higher on a handheld Xbox that's, maybe Series S level in terms of horsepower than the ceiling of going above the the Series X and just aiming for throwing more teraflops at the problem, you know, which the, the reports on the, the PS5 Pro is that they're they're really pushing harder on the ray tracing. And ray tracing is nice, but I would make the polite argument that you can't really like instantly and obviously see that on screen 
unless you're doing a, a digital foundry side by side comparison thing versus again last time around when Microsoft first did did this mid gen upgrade with a uh, with the One X where it was plain as day that you were looking at a 4K game. So um, yeah, I I definitely applaud Microsoft strategy here, and I will absolutely buy a handheld Xbox and X Boy if you will, because I want to take anything in my collection on the go. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of us are excited about the idea of a portable Xbox. <clears throat> it seems to make a lot of sense uh, why Microsoft would be exploring that. Max, it, it seems to make less sense why PlayStation wouldn't explore it, given they have a history with successful handhelds already, and, and Xbox doesn't. It's interesting. It kind of it kind of makes me wonder if maybe Sony's just playing things safe. It, again, we've you know Sony has a, a experience doing this. We had the the PSP, the PSP Go, the Vita, and those things. You know, maybe maybe they were ahead of the curve in try, in trying to offer really high quality graphics on a, on a portable system. Like the Switch, I think broke down some barriers, and it's you know it's a generational thing. I, you know, I imagine you know kids who've grown up with phones and tablets maybe gravitate towards uh, a smaller screen uh, more than some of us who grew up sitting on living room floors with controllers connected to TVs, but uh, you know, get in the weeds there. I, I, I would love it if Sony brought out a new handheld, like a dedicated handheld. The, uh, the PlayStation Portal is a really cool little machine and it took, me a, it took me a minute to really wrap my head around what it is and what it's for and how it, not how it works, but that it does work. And it's really cool when it, when it clicks and when you finally you know, experience it, but it is such a, you know, it's like threading the needle of here's finding the, the ideal situation where this thing works, which is, if you have a stable internet and you already have a PS5 at home and you know, it, it all lines up there and you don't mind the fact that you're, you're only using this for, you know, streaming from your PS5. Uh, whereas, you know, with a, with a backbone controller, you can, you can effectively have this experience with X cloud on your phone. Um, you know, so also with, you know, PlayStation remote play, I don't know. Yeah. I, I would love, I would love a, a proper PlayStation portable again, but it, it seems, I don't know. It seems kind of at odds with, you know how Sony Sony loves to do their sort of proprietary hardware. They love to have this sort of this is the way we do it. We're not going to do it another way. Whereas you know Microsoft has a, a a long history of kind of kind of being willing to open up to other you know other try other things. You know like I, I remember being like you know this is this is pre Xbox, but seeing you know seeing Microsoft Office running on a Mac and that the fact that that's a that's a thing that was out there. The, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It, like um, Phil Spencer seems totally open to the idea of just doesn't they don't care what you're playing on as long as you're playing Xbox games, which is that's awesome. I love that. And we're just now seeing just Sony's like dipping a toe into putting games on PC properly. And I, I guess the solution there is that if you want to play those games on PC on the go, then there's other solutions for that. And Sony doesn't have to worry about manufacturing them or them not selling. But yeah, I mean, it would be nice if we had a, a little a little PlayStation portable device aside from the the portal to be part of that family if they want to kind of grow that ecosystem. But um, I don't know. I'm I'm more inclined at this point to to throw money at an Xbox handheld than a more powerful PS5, if that's what it comes down to. And Max, to your point earlier about the the real need for for a PS5 Pro at this point, where people like you you referenced the poll about about people not feeling like they're getting a true current gen experience already. I wonder if with the core gamer that's you know. It, we both, we all know the core gamer is really important to Sony's, to the PlayStation business strategy. They've, they've really done a great job of, of securing the, the core gamer over the last couple of generations. But do, do you think that maybe it, it will discourage people if they go ahead and upgrade to a PS5 Pro, are they going to skip the PlayStation 6 until uh, anticipating a 6 Pro? Like, I, I wonder if there's a little bit of that that could come into play of like, is it, is it uh, a little bit of a risk to the to the future of the hardware roadmap? Not in the grand scheme of things, but in that kind of core gamer demographic a little bit. Yeah, I mean this this generation was was bizarre. There was the whole you know console shortages early on, and I can't help but feel like early adopters were just a little more than usual, you know, or the sort of the the relationship of the that thrill of having the shiny new toy that can only do certain things that other people's stuff couldn't. It's kind of not so much as the the fact that like we're still sitting around waiting for you know, waiting for the PS5 to truly shine. And uh, I don't, yeah, the, the, the Series X, the whole, um, what is it? Uh, uh, optimized delivery, what's it called? Smart delivery. Yeah. Uh, 
That was a smart delivery of that line there. Um, but no, I, I think that's a really, that was a clever way. And I, they kind of almost massaged it by the fact that we went from the one to the one X to the series X slash series S. And it's this kind of, I don't know. It's a, it, it all, it seems like a more simplified version of, you know, can your PC run this game? Your PC may vary. And it's kind of, it feels like it's, I don't know, natural in that sense. Whereas Sony coming out with the jump from a four to a five is a, Again, they believe in generations, which is exciting, but those generations have to justify their existence. Like there has to be a, you know, a, a reason for that. And, you know, looking at, you know, the, the fact that the, you know, the one, the one X and the PS5 pro, they gave us, you know, 4k and HDR, which were not things we had with the launch versions of last gen. Those are noticeable, noticeable improvements. The fact that the PS5 allegedly out of the box supports 8k kind of shoots itself in the foot because not that anyone has an 8K TV yet, but like that would be the thing that they could be like, oh, and this is the only way to play 8K. I don't know what other bells and whistles aside from a you know, slight performance or showing off uh, ray tracing, which again, it's possible showing off ray tracing in enough of those side-by-side -side videos really does impress. But uh, I keep thinking of there's a, <laughs> there's a scene in, in Boogie Nights where Don Cheadle is trying to sell people hi-fi systems and it's just, he's just listing off uh, you know, specs and trying to sell them on like a new stereo system. And it, it reaches a point where it's kind of an emperor's new clothes thing where can you really tell the difference? Are you really getting that much more premium of an experience by throwing hundreds of dollars at a new machine when, you know, is the one you have it at home fine? You know, it's it's hard, it's, it's hard to say. And we're getting, you know, we're getting so like so far advanced in terms of graphics that it's, it, it comes down to what developers are doing with the hardware less than the hardware itself. It'll be really interesting to see how this develops. I think most of us are more excited about the idea of a portable Xbox than a PS5 Pro, but Sony seems, seems hell-bent on trying to convince everyone that they do want a more powerful, slightly more powerful PS5 uh, underneath their TV. So we'll see what ends up being true as the year unfolds. Let's talk about that poll that we've referenced a couple times. Last week we asked, what did you expect from this console generation that Series X and PS5 didn't deliver on? And yes, the winner by a landslide was t true current gen games, which I think is a little sad, but the overall sentiment is that they don't feel like, you know, four years in that we're, we're still not getting, uh, you know, games that could really only be accomplished on this generation of consoles. Ryan, what's sort of your feeling on that? People aren't wrong to have voted that way. I went ahead and voted for uh, 60 frames per second just because that's, I feel like that's a, that was a big thing coming in that, that just hasn't quite materialized. I mean, there are games with performance modes and there are things like Gran Turismo 7 and, and Forza Motorsport uh, as well. But yeah, it's, I know that the pandemic had this crazy sort of domino effect on software, not just this, this, the supply chain and the physical availability of the consoles themselves. And theoretically, we shouldn't see a black swan event like that when it is time for the next Xbox and the, and the PlayStation 6. And so maybe we will see more of a, a quicker jump uh, technologically into, into, into the games of PS6 and, and the next Xbox, where if we do this poll again, three years into the three and a half years into the next gen, the results won't come out the same. But yeah, I don't I don't blame anybody at all for feeling like that they're the 500 bucks they spent on either of these machines has just not quite yielded five hundred dollars worth of results yet. And then to your point, Max, the fact that uh, Sony does put, you know, an 8K symbol on the PS5 box. Well, only 5% of our respondents are most disappointed in the lack of 8K games. So sounds like Sony is OK on that front. At, at this point. A new poll for you to vote on for next episode. Which of these upcoming rumored hardware devices is at the top of your wish list? Is it a handheld Xbox? Is it a PS5 Pro? Or something different like the Nintendo Switch 2? Make sure to vote at IGN.com the day this episode goes live. And we'll share the results with you next episode. And that's going to do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you to both Max and Ryan. Thank you to Jober and everyone working behind the scenes here in our LA office to make this episode possible. My name is Damon. We'll be back next week with more on the latest gaming hardware news. We'll see you then. Thank you.